this session will probably be fairly short because uh, I talked about uh, quite a bit of the detail in the previous session. But um, let's. Uh, so we're talking about the energy spectral line splitting when you switch on a magnetic field, the, the so called uh, Zeeman, or if you pronounce it the way Americans do, the Z. Zeeman, but uh, Americans are not known for their linguistic skills. America has been so dominant, uh, the absolute mono power in the world for the last half century. But uh, because of that, uh, English, or rather American, has become the world language. So the Americans uh, could afford to be linguistically lazy and they don't bother getting into languages very much. That will be a handicap to them as the world becomes increasingly multipolar uh, with the growing dominance of China and to some extent India. Uh, I read by 2030s uh, it's likely that the Indians will outnumber the Chinese in terms of population, so uh, two decades away. Uh, personally, I see the Chinese being easily, far and away, the dominant power with, with no real competition coming from India, except in purchasing power terms and, and, and such like. For the simple reason of one, in my view, overwhelming factor, and that is the IQ difference, the average IQ difference between Chinese and Indians. Uh, according, to, according to the World IQ map, uh, the average IQ of Chinese is 105, they're amongst the smartest people in the world, uh, as, a, as a large group. I mean, the Ashkenazi Jews are the smartest people in the world, but they're a tiny minority, most of them in America. Uh, whereas the Indians, uh, their average IQ is only 85. Uh, the same as Arabs and Native Americans, there's a great swathe of humanity an average IQ of about 85, so they're part of that uh, great mass of humanity. With the African, black Africans at 70. So with an IQ difference, average IQ difference of 20 points, which is a lot, uh, that's going to have a major impact when, si um, when the Chinese really start getting educated and so they can reach their full intellectual potential and express uh, you know, all that intelligence. I mean, imagine what China's going to be like in a decade or more when there are 30 million sages. A sage being somebody top 1% intelligence, PhD, uh, has ideas, you know, is an intellectual and writes books. 30 million of them. That's a yeah, whole cities of them. Mind, mind, mind boggling. So, uh, if you, if you think the Chinese are starting to throw their weight around now, I mean, that's just nothing uh, compared to what they'll be doing in 2020s, 2030s. And I hope to be alive then. I, yeah, and that's why I'm here. I mean, today's, I keep saying, today's China for a Westerner is a shithole. But, uh, yeah, I put up with it largely by interacting with the Chinese as little as possible to stay sane. Uh, not only not to feel alienated, but uh, not to feel degraded because uh, the attitude gaps, the lack of respect of the rights of the individual, the mean-spiritedness, the thieving, cheating, lying of, of the Chinese, I, I can't stand. So uh, I just interact as little as possible. Uh, my body lives in China, but uh, I live in my head and the internet. So I feel I'm communicating now with the world. Uh, this way. So I stay sane that way and I can put up with a decade or so. You know, for somebody in their mid-60s, like, like I said, I had a birthday yesterday, so now uh, literally mid-60s, 65. So, uh, you know, another 10 years is, is not a lot of time. That will go quickly for, for somebody of my age. Anyway, uh, so, um, so I just see uh, China absolutely dominating India uh, because, because of that one critical factor of the IQ gap 
you know, like a 20 IQ point difference. That's, that's huge. That's, that's going to have enormous consequences. Anyway, uh, back, back to the physics. So, uh, so let's, let's take the case then for the Zeeman effect um, where n is 2, the quantum number n is 2 and l is 1, right? And we're talking uh, spin coupling. So uh, we have spin, so a value of s uh, as the half. So uh, if l is 1, the allowed values of j are then uh, l plus or minus s, so uh, 1 plus or minus a half, so 3 over 2 or a half. Now if it's 3 over 2, as I was saying earlier, uh, so that would correspond to the spin angular momentum being parallel, inverted commas. Uh, it's not strictly parallel, it's not like this, it's more like uh, the up state, so it's sort of, you know, there's only two states, that, that's the upper up state and that's the down state. It's not that or that, I mean, that, that can't be, but it's, it's like that or that, so that's why I put parallel in uh, quotation marks, okay? So, uh, so in the parallel case, uh, j is 3 over 2, in the anti-parallel case, so it'd be like the down state like this, uh, uh, j is a half, okay, the anti-parallel. So when j is one and a half, three over two, the allowed values of m of j, you know, the component along the z-axis of j, would be you know, ranging between plus or minus three over two, so you know, did this the previous session, just going through this quickly. So three over two, a half minus a half minus three over two. There are your four possibilities. Right? And you saw in the previous diagram uh, the energy splitting four ways corresponding to the four different values of m, you get mj. Okay? And similar uh, for when j is a half, uh, the m ranges over the range uh, plus j to dot 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 to minus j in, in jumps of unit one. Okay? On the, and in that case, there's only two possibilities. Right? So the energy, that particular energy uh, spectral line splits two ways, not four ways. Okay. So you've got six, six, six cases. So the eigenstates corresponding to uh, those six cases, uh, when the magnetic field gets switched off, those eigenstates are six-fold degenerate. Right? Remember degeneracy? What does that mean? Uh, degeneracy occurs when you have two or more eigenstates, you know, eigenfunctions, that have the same eigenvalue. Okay? That's the definition of uh, degeneracy. In this case, uh, the magnetic field switches off, then uh, those uh, lines, you know, they don't split, they go back to what, what they were. And uh, so you have, like in this case, you'd have four eigenfunctions, all with the same eigenenergy. In this case, you'd have two eigenfunctions with the same eigenenergy. So you've got degeneracy, right? Okay. Uh, all right. Now, with the magnetic field off, okay, switched off, then, uh, and so you, the third term in the Hamiltonian is operating, so assume you still have spin-orbit coupling, but, but only that. You don't have, you do not have the fourth term. You do not have uh, Zeeman effect uh, operating no, because there's no magnetic field, it's zero. Right? Then uh, the energy level with this, due to the spin orbit coupling, there's a bit of revision here, uh, it spits so, uh, into a doublet, you know, just two, uh, two different frequencies. Okay? And uh, the, energy, the energy difference between these two energy levels is this amount. Right? Now we've done that in an earlier session.